This club's about winning trophies. I'm inexperiencing a lot of those things. Three nil. Can you believe it? Almost lost the cup and you win it. The new European champions, the treble, the dream come true for you. Oh, I can't believe that. I can't believe that. Football, bloody hell. But they never give in. And that's the winner. Welcome to the American Red Devils podcast. I'm John. I'm Alex. And we are bringing you the best Manchester United news from this side of the pod. Ooh, sir. How you doing? How you doing? Extra special pod today. 5-2 thumping of Bournemouth. And it also happens to be a very special Independence Day. So happy 4th of July to all the American Red Devils around the world. And uh, happy Saturday. Happy weekend. How we doing? How we doing? I mean, what a match. The I'm going to say the downs and then the ups. You know, the the first goal hit us early, came back strong. Then the Bayi, I don't know if that's a handball, easy VAR. The, the VAR gods didn't, they wanted to pull one back on, on Manchester United today, but we came roaring back each time. The confidence, Mason Greenwood, come on. I mean, Manchester United legend already. On Is his he? way. He's on his way. Uh, we have quite a player on our hands, a special talent, and this club is used to having special talents. We've had, we have some already, you know, Rashford paved the way for him, but Greenwood is looking like something special for sure. Um, but it was good because this is the first time United had gone down early with this new look 11. Um, that is like the de facto starting 11 for Ole and they battled back quickly. You know, it was like, oh, they were down, and then they were back up, and it was no big deal. Uh, after a couple crappy goals, right? The first and the, the, you know, opening the first half, opening the second half. So United looked resolute. Great performance. Great win. I mean, Ole gets his spot on again, starting 11. We know it. Uh, Mason Greenwood, undroppable at this point. <laughs> I mean, we, hey, look, I sang his praises. I thought almost a little too hard last pod, and now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, actually, I think I was spot on. Scores on the left, scores on the right, dangerous, runs at defenders. I mean, wherever he gets the ball inside the box, it looks like he can score. It's unbelievable. I mean, he's you're looking at sort of the, the next evolution, sir. Left, right, you can't tell the difference. No, I mean, I think we've all sung his praise. His last game was his, his breakout game. That was the best performance he had um, was the previous one at Brighton, and this was strength to strength, right? Good finishes, um, probably not as much link-up play involved today, but he's just... He's an X-level talent, and he's going to keep starting. He's 18 years old, and we haven't seen a young player bust onto the scene like this in England in a long time. So very exciting for us. There's going to be a lot of parallels, but like you said, he's got this new shimmy and shake that we haven't seen a player that can finish left and right like him, like that. And a tight angle. you know. And, and here's the thing. Those goals that he scores, we're looking for a goal. Who's going to give us that goal? 18-year-old Mason Greenwood, he's the one to bring us back into the game each time. That's huge. That's absolutely huge. Takes the pressure off Bruno. Takes the pressure off Paul Pogba, who did a job in the midfield, not on the not you know too heavy on the score sheet, Paul Pogba, but you know he's just taking the pressure off, letting Martial get a goal, get that third goal. Mar- Rashford got the penalty from Bruno. I mean, we're starting to spread the love around. We're scoring four, we're scoring five. Can we score six? Can we get another hat trick? These are the times of Manchester United, sir. Are we back? Is Manchester United back? It's been a hell of a seven years, but I'm thinking, you know, what what's going to stop this? Uh, What's going to stop this? Was 16 unbeaten now? 16 unbeaten. The only thing that's going to stop us is ourselves. This team is bang on. You know, the fact that we could come back today after giving up two crappy goals uh, and look convincing the whole time. Even when we were down, we turned the pressure on. This is one of the times where I think the water break paid out in our favor. You know, we were okay. They, they got the goal, and then we came out of that water break in the first half and just, like, scorched them. Um, it's a quality team. There's a lot of attacking options. Pug was laying, playing deep and playing a great job, like an unbelievable job um, right in front of Matic. So... You know, everyone's growing strength to strength. Bruno can do no wrong. Scored an unbelievable free kick. Another great game. So this team is growing. Every game getting better and better. Um, and as long as we can, you know, stay injury free and just keep the pressure on, there's, sky's the limit, baby. Shout out to that Martial goal. What a goal. There's so many good goals I mean, today. Curler bar down. Just like, bar down. I mean, <laughs> bar down. if I could score one goal for Mitch Schneider, that's, that's how I would like to do it. Uh, smiles all around for Martial. I haven't seen him sulking. Haven't seen that grumpy Martial we've been used to over the years. 
But I mean, hey, I guess Happy Martial is the best Martial. And shout out to him. He's leading the line for Manchester United at the moment. But Mason's hot on his tail. And having that, we were like, oh, number nine, number nine. We were talking about it. A lot of people tweeting us, hey, we got Mason Greenwood. I felt like you need to wait till he's 21 to rely on him to get like 20 goals. He's doing it. He's He's got 15. He's 18 already. I mean, he could be the leading scorer for Manchester United next season at 19, which is absolutely insane. Unbelievable. He could be. The whole thing is you didn't want to put pressure on him to be like, you got to go out there and score 15, 20 goals a season as an 18, 19 year old. He just seems to be such a talent that like, hey, bud, if he's going to get the minutes and can keep kicking on like he's been kicking on, he's going to score goals. There's like no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Easily over 20 goals. So you have Rashford now scored his 20th goal of the day. It was great that he got his penalty. Martial had his banger. He hit, he hit 20. And you have Mason Greenwood at 18 at 15 goals. So this team is getting goals from all over the field. And even when players aren't scoring, right? Rashford got, had to get a penalty to get his first goal since the break. Green was putting in goals. You know, Bruno's hitting from free kicks. We're hitting in all, all cylinders. Buzzing. buzzing. We're buzzing. We're we, 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 we buzzing We absolutely... <laughs> I, I know, I'm not going to go full Arlo White on that one. But United are buzzing at the minute. Things are great. If you got to stop the party for a second, you got to look at that the center back pairing and say, hey, you know, maybe with De Gea involved as well. Those three, McGuire, Lindelof, De Gea, usually good for football folly every other match. And this one was on McGuire. We got a couple. Uh, McGuire's had two since we've come back. Obviously not trying to slate him. I believe in McGuire. Very pedestrian. Got megged. Kind of went in soft. Got megged. And then... That just looked like it looked like training field stuff for, out there for Manchester United and McGuire. He's got to make a much more solid challenge there. Rio said it after the game. You know that might be the place that we need to strengthen more than anything on the pitch, especially when you bring Bayi on for Lind- injured Lindelof and he kind of makes that error. You got to give him that. It was it was unfair, but if Manchester United look to improve right now. Center back's probably the the move. It might be. I mean, I hate to say it, we got pretty good depth in midfield if you, if you hold on to everybody. Um, and now with Greenwood on the scene, you know, you'd like another striker. You'd like another attacker for sure. But if you can't get Sancho right now, I, I would be behind investing in another center back. Because McGuire, I love him. I want him to be our man. Can't but 80 well. million, he, he's gotten beaten too many times for an $80 million man. Today's was not great. Another bad one uh, since the break. Lindelof bad. is always prone. Now he's gotten injuries. Bye. I don't give him a lot of, you know, it's kind of a buy football folly as well, but that was a, a tough call. I think, I don't think that was a handball uh, or a pen, but he seemed to play better after that. We probably need a center back. I, I you know, no, I mean, no one's going to replace Ari, you know, and no one's going to get Kabali. I would do Kabali for like, see if you can get him for 60 million. <laughs> We don't have any cash. You think Kabali is fast enough to make up the errors that Harry Maguire makes. I don't know about that. I, <laughs> oh, <laughs> is anyone fast enough to uh, fi- fix the, the gaffes that Maguire does on occasion, you know, when they happen, they happen. But this team has goals in them. It's just that championship teams win with defense. Well, it's, you know, if you look at how the the top teams are playing these days, right, you're going to have the fullbacks getting forward. And the center backs, they need to be calm. They need to be able to bail you out. And there's a few moments in this game where in those situations where, you know, it's 2v3, they need to make the right decision. Uh they were not, and we've gotten we've gotten beat a few times. And that, it's kind of when you're putting everyone forward against lower opposition teams, the counterattack is was dangerous, and you need to make the right decision. And we've seen a few errors in Project Restart that don't really matter because we're playing against poor opposition and we're scoring lots of goals. You play all these other teams, who knows? I, look, w- before the season restarted, we were putting clean sheets on City, so maybe it's a fitness thing. I'm not sure. So let's just put an asterisk there. The lads played well, but. Watch out at the back at the moment. There's some brain farts, but you have to say Mata just shorted up. You know, he, he yep. looks to be a big part of when we, you know, we have these gaffes um, with our center backs and he just kind of comes in and cleans up shop. And as Pogba, there's nobody, I, I ain't seen no Yagba since the break's been back. So he's been playing, he's been running and he's looked like a great player. So um, let's kick out from here. Look, quick PSA for the podcast. You know it. Uh, you can check out our website, AmericaRedDevils.com independent fan content for fans by fans we've had some new contributors reach out during project restart appreciate you if you'd like to contribute to the blog you can email us americanreddevils.com as always drop a review on itunes that goes a long way for people finding us organically there's a ton of manchester united fans out there and if you can drop five stars leave a cheeky review it goes a long way to help us grow also you can check out our merchandise i'm wearing the american red devils inaugural scarf right now we're almost sold out of them uh, all of our scarves going pretty fast online. They're a great price. I think 14 bucks for the inaugural scarf. I think 9.99 for the Glazers Out scarf. 
get yourself one while they last. We'll be ordering new ones for next season whenever that kicks off. Uh, also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're kicking things off there. We're posting all of our pod episodes, and we'll be doing some clips. Look, we have no ads on this podcast. We love you guys, the fans. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for downloading, and thank you for listening. What a season. What a time to be a Manchester United fan. It's been a long road. Hey, it's been a long road. We've had a lot of ups and downs. We've had ups and downs with Ole. Um, but now there is some wind under our wings and Bruno, man, Bruno has been the catalyst, but you have all these players kicking on and it's exciting time to be at the club. Exciting time. If we can just like wrap up the season with some, you know, some, some silverware, a strong finish, let's go for third. That should be the goal. And we should just try and roll in the league. So I'm excited, sir. Very, I'll, t- very excited. I'll tell you what about, about Bruno. When my mom calls me, tells you know, me about <laughs> my mom going. calls me up. She's like, how about that Bruno? She, he's pretty good score too. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> I was like, my, my parents are big, big Yankee fans. They like baseball. Baseball's not on. They're watching United. When my mom calls out a player on Manchester United, you know, he's good. So Bruno getting a shout out from, from my mom. What do, what do you think about that, sir? If anyone deserves it, it's uh, Bruno the Milkman, <laughs> Fernandez. And PSA, we know that's not milk, but that's the nickname going forward. We're, we're keeping that one here on the pod. Let's jump into the match breakdown. Manchester United 5, AFC Bournemouth, a.k.a. the Cherries 2 at Old Trafford, sir. We played at home turf today. Starting 11, we had Dave, the world number one in net. Lindelof, McGuire, center back pairing. Juan Basaka on the right, Obi-Wan. Luke Shaw on the left, the impossible meat pie. Pogba, Matic, Pog, Pogtich, midfield. Fernandez in the hole. Greenwood on the right, Rashford on the left. Tony Marshall came from France, leading the line. I think we all knew what the lineup would be. How are you feeling about that? Feeling good. When you know you're starting 11 and you just want to see it come out again, right? I think I didn't even hear it. There's a rumor I think flared up that, like, you know, Bruno and Pogba got hurt in training, but. Starting 11 is the that starting 11 error. we all want to see. An, it was basically a troll blog wrote it. Troll then blogs. I think the mirror picked it up and the mail picked it up. I tweeted it out. Everyone told me it was fake. Apologies for that. Got to double check the mirror in the mail. I mean, those are just the rags anyway. They're so trolls. They're rags. Troll, troll papers in the Absolute first place. rags, I mean. But happy to see everyone fit and firing. Uh, that's our starting 11. You know, I like it. Jumping in first half. Mixed start from United. Uh, I thought we lacked the same energy. We came out against Brighton. We really put the screws to them. You know, that would be one criticism. Lots of fixtures coming in, sir. We're going to have a lot more coming up in a tight time frame. So you got to look at the energy levels from the lads. But I don't think we started quite right. And in the 15th minute, uh, it was a pretty tough time. All these highlights are telling them. <laughs> we got all telling them the highlights. But United got done. Harry Maguire, nutmeg. And Bournemouth goal, 1-0. That was tough. I mean, we're sitting on the couch. We're, we're feeling that we're absolutely buzzing off the last match, and then we get scored on. Tough times. And, and you know, I hadn't create, created a lot up to this point, but they were controlling the ball. Uh, it was just like an ugly, fluke little goal. You know, McGuire got done dirty. Snoozing, and then uh, De Gea got beaten with a firm ball at the near post. I don't think he could have done much because it was so close. But McGuire, he shouldn't be doing that. You yeah, got a little more aggressive. That's his whole thing is like he's got to be aggressive because he's a beast. And if he does this kind of like he's unsure of himself, he gets caught out because he doesn't have the speed and sometimes makes the first wrong, uh, you know, the hesitation move. Yeah, Joshua King assisted Stanislas. I believe he was plus 1,800. You would have won 18 times your money betting him to score first in this match. I mean, like you said, we're kind of sleeping. McGuire gets done for the second time. I mean, sir, two, two strikes on McGuire on Project Restart. He can't be doing this anymore. Uh, and then it's kind of, okay, we've seen United go down in a match and struggle early in the season. What could we do? Can we come back? Do we have the confidence? Are we going to hang our heads? And I think we're starting to see a brand new Manchester United. Shout out to Telemundo here in the 29th minute. Rico, el toque hace atrás con Fernández. Sigue Bruno Fernández. Qué buena pelota. Acá está. Okay, buena pelota, sir. I mean, look. Gran passe, indeed. It was a great pass. I mean, Bruno Fernandes, what a pass. A curler, right? Sets Mason Greenwood right up for the touch and then the finish and the pace on that shot. Absolutely beat the keeper. It is Independence Day, but you know, Telemundo posts their highlights earlier than NBC, LFC, so we're going with Telemundo here on the pod. Hey, 
first first is best. So um, as soon as uh, Fernandez pulled off that pass and he spotted Greenwood in the, in the box, I was like, Greenwood gets the ball there. It's a goal. And he knew it. as soon as he got the ball there, bang, goal. And what a finish. You know, you're Left back foot. in it. You know, that's what you want to see is like right in 10. And there was no doubt. Once they got this goal, you know, they're getting another one. I mean, Greenwood gets the pass from Bruno, sets it up, and then just absolutely, absolute rocket ship off his left foot. Unbelievable goal from the youngster, 18. I mean, getting us back in. And from there, you know we're coming back. We're coming in full hard. Oh, yeah. Uh, 31st minute, there was a bad foul on Martial from Jefferson Lerma on Bournemouth. He's shown the yellow. I thought VAR might have had a look at this one, shown him the red, but the VAR gods, they were kind of against us for us on some micro offsides calls on the free kick. I VAR, in my opinion, is just doing the same thing to the EPL that it did that replay did to the NFL. It's like ain't, help, ain't helping nothing. You think you're gonna fix all these errors, and then you end up debating the theory of a catch. And it just doesn't really when you add that microscope, you just have different types of debates and there's different types of errors and different types of calls. I don't like it in the game. I think the ref usually gets it right. I even think without VAR, every this wouldn't VAR would not have affected this game at all whatsoever. It probably would have been six, probably would have been six one. Right, the hand you wouldn't have the handball goal. The rasher goal would probably count. Actually, the referee called it offside. That so handball call was pretty obvious, though. Yeah. <laughs> that was like one of those. Like we're like, we'll get to the Telemundo call. It would call. be like a free kick. You know, <laughs> it would have been a free kick instead. So thirty fourth minute. That's right. We're going to be talking about VAR. There was a handball in the box by the Bournemouth player. Then we got a penalty, and who would step up? I was surprised. Um, yeah, I know. This is a surprise to me. Se prepara, le va a pegar. Viene el remate. Viene Rashford. Goal! Goal! Del Manchester United. Marcus Rashford, fuerte y abajo. Dos a uno. Tiene muchas variaciones en la carrera para que el arquero no adivine el ángulo con el cual le va a entrar la pelota y le entra de frente. Pero... I mean, keeper guessed the right way. My heart kind of skipped the beat there, but Rashford did enough. A little stutter step pen. I don't know about giving it to Rashford. What do you think? I like it's a class move. I think it's because you know Rashford hasn't gotten a goal since the restart. He's on 19, wants to get 20, and he he bears it. If, if he misses, it's an issue. I do. I don't. I, I'm I have, not buying. I have it. questions with it. I'm not buying it. No, but Bruno's a class act, and that's how he rolls. And I I'll like that tell he did you what, it. I'll tell you what, keeper hasn't come that close to Bruno's penalty. I, at Rashford, that wasn't. Hey, he that scores. Wasn't a great All that matters pen. is he scores. I, I, look, it wasn't I like, his best pen. It wasn't exactly Paris. Why do you, it okay. If it's four one and there's a penalty, give it to Rashford. I get it. It's one one. Bruno Fernandez doesn't look like he's automatic from the spot, and you need the goal. I don't know why you give it to Rashford. It's like no. It speaks to the confidence that this team has that they're going to get other chances, and that they know that Marcus Rashford needs a goal. I think it's like yeah, our boy number ten, He's had Marcus Rashford. He has, but give him a penalty so he can definitely score because he hasn't had a penalty yet. So you give him the pen, he gets the goal, he gets the twenty. Let's rock and roll. All right, forty uh, seventh minute, probably goal of the day here. Golazo, the most Telemundo worthy. Golazo. Golazo. I mean, what a song, what a goal, what a man, Tony, Tony Marshall cutting from left to right and then the curler off the right boot. I mean, maybe was that 25 yards out, bar down. I mean, oozing class Oof. at the moment, Tony Marshall. Got to get into that France squad. Got to get in that France squad. And he saw, hey, Marcus, I see you on your 20 goals. I raise you. Here's my 20 goals and just pokes it in top corner. What a beauty of a curler. That's the one, one way to finish the half, right? Be like, all right, Ole, what do you got to say? I mean, what do you think? Uh, I was absolutely buzzing. I'm leaning back, firing off tweets. We got we got the uh, American cherries tweeting us, talking <laughs> talking smack, and then a I, lot of smack. <laughs> and then I I retweeted, thanks for showing up. Thanks, <laughs> no, thanks for coming out. And they started. They were pretty pissed off. I mean, I don't know why the cherries are having a go. Uh, the American Cherry is a, a fan club of one, probably, over there. Uh, <laughs> looking pretty. Eddie Howe's men, sir. You want Eddie Howe to be the manager of Manchester United? Not looking good. 
Sure. That was a long time ago, sir. And I said he was on back the list. In the archives, you know? Yeah. Who have you still <laughs> on that list, bud? <laughs> I, I think. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, gonna, well, I, want, I want Potch. I want Potch to come in. Yeah. Well, or Lauren Blanc or something like hey, that. Lauren Blanc. Yeah. We met Lauren Blanc. Dude, I, I like legend. Him, yeah. Lauren, legend he, of Lauren. He's Lawrence. actually a nice guy. Nice guy. Very nice guy. I want Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to be our manager. Yeah, I know. I'm just having a go. Having, having a, a go. Anyhow. This is how hey, yeah, Tactical genius. Dude, we're feeling good. Feeling fine. We're just having a laugh during halftime. This is an easy game. We're cruising, absolutely buzzing. Then all of a sudden, come out, halftime sub. Bayi replaces Victor Lindelof. All right. You know, I don't, I don't have any problems with Eric Bayi. Eric Bayi's going to come in. He's going to make a cracking challenge, probably get injured, probably need to put in another defender. Phil Jones is injured. Not exactly who. Maybe McTominay can play center back, something like that. And, you know, in the 47th minute, we conceded a penalty Eric Bailly kind of jumps awkwardly on a back pass from Bruno Fernandez, hits his kind of upper shoulder, and when you look at VAR, actually in the penalty box. Unbelievable. They give the penalty to Bournemouth, and Joshua King nets it. Penalty. Yeah, I believe the back pass is from Matic, but it was a weird one, right? I, do you think it's a penalty? I mean, I thought it was like... I think it was his shoulder. It wasn't one of those, like, it wasn't like the one in the first half by the Bournemouth player. Um, so for me, I think that's a tough call on Eric. You know, that ter- certainly rattled him a little bit, but I think us getting the, the other goal and putting the game to bed helped. No, absolutely. We'll have to do a fact check on who actually made the back pass, sir. I, 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 I actually probably wasn't even watching at the moment. I was just like trolling. <laughs> You're just tweeting so hard. You're tweeting, tweeting and, the cherries. I was tweeting the cherries. <laughs> I was just tweeting up the cherries. Uh, I'll, I'll, hey, hey tweet, tweet the cherries if you want. Uh, all day. I mean, really unfortunate because now we're looking at 3-2, kind of the momentum taken out of us. And then right after that, our center backs looked absolutely shook. We got Caught on a counterattack goal by Bournemouth. Joshua King uh, th- puts a through ball into Arnott. Don Yuma, he scores, and then it's offside, sir, by a very thin margin. But that defending looks shaky. Everything after this looks shaky. Our confidence was wavering, and we needed a goal. Who can we look to to score that goal for Manchester United? Didn't have to wait long in the 54th minute. El autor del primero sigue Greenwood. Tiene el remate. Golazo. I mean, what a goal. I scores mean, on his left, scores on his right from almost an impossible <laughs> angle. It's like a FIFA goal. It's I mean, out, honestly, that's like ridiculous. Nothing. That's but a ridiculous goal. It's out of nothing. Yeah, it's one of those goals you score in FIFA where you're like, there's no way you can score from there. <laughs> you just like rip the joystick the wrong way and it just goes top corner. It's a special goal from a special young lad. Two goal losses in one day. I was hoping he'd get his hat trick. But it's like when he gets on the ball and his head goes down and he starts charging towards net, you know some fire's coming. And that one, I couldn't believe he scored exactly what we needed. Took the pressure off the lads, took the pressure off the center backs. They needed it. We needed a little daylight there. 4-2 to Manchester United. Sir, we were absolutely... Now we're, Now we can chill. Now we can kind of chill, right? It, I mean, it's nice when you're just pouring it on, but we're going to have to be able to hold the line um, with our defense a little bit better because... Your Rhea might be on something. It might look, but at the end of the season, like, holy crap, <laughs> center back is the priority. We only had to wait five minutes, 59th <laughs> minute. Fernandez, también Pogba se mueve. Viene Fernandez. Goal! Goal! Del Manchester United! Una de las figuras de este equipo, Bruno Fernández, de tiro libre. Que golazo. Que golazo de Bruno Fernández. Unbelievable it. free kick. <sighs> Just like, you know, the nice. Selly. Love the Selly. Cover the ears. Good finish. Give the camera a kiss. Bruno Fernández. Our Portuguese Magnifico. I mean, hitting the ground. I mean, like, we're, we're a new Manchester United. I mean, when, when are we scoring... This many goals just destroying teams. We we did we did Norwich pretty bad earlier in the year, but this is the consistency and the ruthlessness from this team. It's all about that mentality. 
and we look like the hard headed team of old. It's like this is like a winning mentality. You can see it. They're all pushing each other. They get disappointed when they when they screw up chances. The standards have already risen. Like from February, it's notable that like everybody is kind of playing at a much higher tempo. The expectation levels are higher and the bar is just straight up higher. It's like if you're going to get into the starting 11, you got to be able to play at this level of football. And somehow Mason Greenwood can lead the line, man, and just showing how it's done. Well, that's part of it is, like you said, continually raising the bar. Whereas I felt like earlier in the year, we, we would we like barely get a goal and then like defend, defend, defend and like really like shakily get three points. And now it's like. Greenwood scores. Martial's like, uh, I want one. Then Greenwood's yep. like, I want another. And Bruno's like, I'm getting in that. <laughs> and it's just like, just stacking them, stacking them. And the highlight reel from just Project Restart it's is ridiculous. unbelievable. <laughs> it's, it's just like, it's like the free kick goal, Mason Greenwood left, right. Then you have the Martial. I mean, there's not a bad goal in the mix. And then we're going to talk about a few minutes later, offsides goal from Rashford. Aaron Wan Basaka, amazing through ball. Rashford off by a toe. VAR end up checking this one. The linesman did get it right. Rash are just off sides, but what you're seeing here is like when Ole talked in his last presser about how we're starting to see some really quality attack, some really great play from Manchester United. I haven't seen this type of football, and it's coming in droves. It's unbelievable to be a Manchester United fan at the moment. This is vintage Manchester United. For the people who missed out in the Fergie years, I mean, we're not, we don't have the titles. We don't have that in silver or consistency, but just the way this team plays now where it's like they just keep scoring. They keep going for more goals. We instead of, instead of taking the foot off the gas, you just keep scoring goals because you realize if you score five goals, they're probably not going to score five goals. <laughs> yeah, no, but that, that, that's, I mean, we're also playing against poor teams we that are relegation bound, but we had never looked this good, this consistently against these types of teams. It's always been shaky uh, home and away. Clearly there's no fans, but at the same time, I think we're seeing a spark here where if, you know, <laughs> the Glazers scum, can give us the cash or somehow raise the money to be able to add to it and improve it. Cause we don't need a lot of improvements, but we need improvements. Cause again, it's a long season and to be able to compete for the title. And my expectation is next season, we need to be able to compete against Liverpool against shitty against Chelsea, all these teams reinforcing pretty hard. We got to be able to have a run of the title, have a run of the title. We got to be in it the whole time. We got to be in it the whole time. We do. And we just need a proper kitty. You don't need to go crazy, but like, Ole is showing that he knows how to spend money well. Give him enough money to just add the last step. And you can't do what you did with Jose. And you get him you get him 80% of the way there, and then he goes to second, and then you just don't give him any more money. Right? Like Liverpool might make the same mistake. They might not reinvest in the squad after they've done everything. And the key is you gotta just keep investing in the team. Yeah, we don't got no money. That's the issue. <laughs> well, we got a match. Get so we still got this match breakdown. 67th minute. We got a lot of subs. Fred on for Montish. Could he score? Can Fred score? Nope. Uh, 75th minute sub James for Greenwood. Get James on there. 80th minute sub Mata and on for Martial. It got on for Rashford. So give the lads a rest. I think Ole knows we have a pretty good break until our next match. So he's going to try to stretch this one out a little more. Give him more fitness. And the 84th minute, Agalo came close to making it six. A cheeky right-footed shot from the center. Misses to the left, assisted by Bruno Fernandez. But I mean... Look, what a day for Manchester United. That's the match. 5-2. This is the type of score you like to see. This is what Sir Alice Ferguson was all about. Attack, attack, attack. That's the name of the game. That's what this club was built on. And we're not even talking about there were like a bunch of chances at the end where their keeper was actually pulled in to some big saves, right? I think Pogba had a chance. I think Bruno had a chance. I think even your boy Fred had a chance. So United just showing that like that's the way you win. You just score goals. Um, and this is something we couldn't do before, right? Teams would sit back. They got their goal. Bournemouth sat back, and we just picked them apart. Absolutely tore them in pieces. No. <laughs> Eddie Howe's You hear men. that, Cherries? You hear that? <laughs> Eddie Howe's men. Uh, match reaction, look at the stats. United 70% of the ball to Bournemouth's 30%. And again, like you said, we've struggled with the ball. Now, no more after Bruno Fernandes came into Manchester United. 19 shots, 10 on target, 8 corners. <laughs> That's domination. Absolutely just dominating Bournemouth. Without a shadow of a doubt, they only had three shots on target, but two goals. Clearly, that penalty helped them a lot. Should have been 5-1, maybe 6-1. Manchester United have won three consecutive Premier League games for the first time since they won all of their first six matches under manager Ole Gunnar Solskjaer from December 2018 to January 2019. Sir, I think Ole's at the wheel again. I oh. mean, I, I, that, I think we're back. I mean, he's been back for us for since, us since but, we you know. since the 11th but i think officially they got to be singing that song again when they just start singing songs again in i think it was waiting for us bars. to make top 4 i think it was so waiting too. for it's us a to win something yeah. uh, 
This was the first time Manchester United scored five plus goals in a home game since ma- home match since Boxing Day 2011 when they beat Wigan five 0 That's a long time. So nine years back to the you know the big man. Greenwood has now scored eight league goals for Manchester United in 2019-20 among players age 18 or younger. Only Michael Owen twice, Robbie Fowler, and Wayne Rooney have ever scored more in a single Premier League season. Something tells me he's going to keep adding to that tally. He's not done yet. He might be the record holder at the end of it. And Bruno Fernandes, six goals, five assists, has surpassed 10 goal involvements in his ninth Premier League appearance for Manchester United, making him the joint quickest to 10 goals and assists combined of any player in the competition alongside who? Cantona and RVP. I mean, we're looking at, oh man, Bruno Fernandes. I mean... Welcome to the world stage. And what's the commonality with those players? Those are both catalysts to title winning sides, right? So it's, we need, a, we might need a little bit more, but we're close. I and mean, this team with the right mentality can kick on and challenge next year. Cause I don't think Liverpool are going to be able to dominate the way they did this year. Um, they're just not going to be able to. So we, we yeah, your favorite team. What are you talking about? What are you bringing this up they on exist, the pod? Bro. Why are you talking about that? They exist, bro. We got to take the, we got to, we got to knock them right back off the perch. Oh yeah, so the only, yeah, the only thing I'm going to say about that is what they got dusted by City, and then Klopp got all defensive <laughs> in the presser when everyone yeah. was like, "What are you doing?" They're partying with fans in the middle of a pandemic, and the only thing I'll say about the team who should not be named, you know, at least they want it in this type of style where they can't just like absolutely run a parade downtown and just party all over the place. Even though they did, but who knows? Who knows? Who knows, sir? All right, what do we know? Let's check in with the manager, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Well, it's never dull these days here, is it? What a game that was. <laughs> it's exciting. Uh, great attacking football. Some uh, fantastic goals. Too bad our fans couldn't be here and even spur us on. Because, you know, you can, you can see the energy in the team. You can see the atmosphere within the team. But if that crowd is here and even that lifts you even more, that it, it could have been six or seven or eight then. So, of course, when it is a strange uh, feeling playing in front of no one. But I think the, the team is doing exceptional. I think they're doing whatever they can to create that atmosphere themselves. And I guess a different sort of challenge today because you went behind, but there was no no panic. You came straight back no, into it. It's, uh, well, we didn't come straight back, but there was no panic. We just have to play and play and trust the way that they have performed and played lately. I think uh, it's been very exciting to, to watch the, the front uh, players, of course, but they get delivery from behind. They get, get passes, assists, uh, they get uh, play balls to work with. And uh, we'll keep on working, keep trying to improve for next time. I mean, obviously the front three are uh, exciting in terms of goals today. And Mason, we know he's two-footed, but that was, yeah. everyone could see that today. Two remarkable yeah. strikes. Great timing as well with, with the goals, important times, some fantastic finishes. Uh, and that's, it's good that defenders can see he can go inside and outside which might create a doubt in the defenders because we know how good he is coming on the inside scoring but uh, I think now um, both goals is on the outside of the defender one with left one with his right so exceptional finisher I mean coming from a finisher talking about doing it on the outside he's not a one trick pony he's a two trick pony on each foot defenders they're not going to know what to do with Mason Greenwood I mean the, the his technical ability on the ball, unbelievable. He's a special talent. And this is talking, this is coming from a coach and a former player who was a very fine finisher himself. So Mason, you don't know what he's going to do. We even, we don't know what he's going to do. We thought we had, he had that one shimmy and shake move that he was doing against all the Europa league teams. And that was like, all right, this is his bag of tricks. But then he started hitting bar down bangers. And then now he's hitting these goals in open play. And it's just, he looks like he's got everything going for him. So he's come back even stronger, bigger than he was uh, during the break in football. So exciting times ahead. He's starting. Hopefully he can stay fit and he can just keep getting those goals. We will be not touching that Mason Greenwood shirt just because we no, can't be. No, no, no. None of the players. So, yeah. we, 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 <laughs> we've banned each other from buying new jerseys or current player jerseys. We can only buy retired players. Sir. That's, that, that's the MO here at the Miracle Devils. Look, Rio Ferdinand, he was on the BT Sport, sir, giving his thoughts on Manchester United. We got to, when Rio speaks, we listen. Well done to him today. Look, Rio, Robbie, quite rightly, the players are going to get the headlines. It will be their photos in the papers. 
Before we talk about the individuals, I think a mention for Oli Gunnar Solskjaer when you see how he's improving the players around him, particularly those young strikers. And particularly the attacking players. Again, I spoke about coming to the stadium or doing games and watching them as a fan on the TV, thinking, what am I going to get? <sighs> Depressing almost, not confident. Whereas now you're going into games thinking, wow, what, how many goals are we going to get? Who's going to score? Can't wait to see the way that they're playing free-flowing, attacking football. And Oli and his coaching staff have to take huge credit for that because it, not only that, they've got young players as well coming in there, going in unfazed and delivering. The two front two players, 20 goals each, Martial and uh, Rashford. It's, it's, it's great at the moment, but they've got to continue that. They've got to keep consistent. And, I mean, Greenwood, we... Speaking about this young kid, you don't want to give him too much and put the spotlight too much. But when he's doing things like that, what he's done today, you've got to give him the credit he deserves. And here, I mean, this this kid, I mean, he's two-footed, which is great. And I spoke about this before at half-time. Watch his step with his right foot. He steps in, he, he cons Smith the right back, makes him come in, expect him to come inside, takes a step back on his left foot and absolutely pile drives into the top of the roof of the net. Rob, you love that? I think, yeah. Look, I mean, we don't need to hear from Robbie. <laughs> but, I mean, Rio singing the praises. He went on to talk about we might need a center back at Manchester United to shore things up. What are your thoughts, given our depth at center back at the moment? I think you uh, play out the rest of the season and figure out where we need the priorities. That'll also, you know, well, I mean, obviously, that'll dictate we can't the kitty. Sign anyone, right? right, that'll dictate the kitty as well. But I think, like, you see how the season plays out. Does Paul want to stay? That'll change it. Um, how good is Greenwood? That will also dictate some things, right? If Greenwood's like a bang, he's going to score twenty goals this season, and he's he's eighteen, and you're going to start him. Every well, you game. still need so like you we need competition. Gotta, I agree. We, we need support, right? But the thing is, you got Twanzebe, Jones, and Lindelof on the injury sheet at the moment, right? Bai is almost always on the injury sheet, and Bai is almost always there. Phil Jones is there pretty often. Yep, Lindelof yep. is decently consistent, but yep. at, at a minimum, you need three that are consistently healthy and rotate. So at least for me, we've always kind of talked about it, and I think it's been controversial to say, but now that I'm watching this team, I really think you know it's the Sancho and then the center back. I know we were talking about a CDM to inherit Matic's crown, if you will, but maybe we can get Matic another season and see where McTominay's at in a year yep. and maybe look toward that center back. I have to agree with Rio on, on, on that one at the moment. Because I, honestly, I, okay, if we sign Sancho, he drops out in, and he might drop out. He might take... Rashford spot at the moment, right? Based on form. Um, well, you but, have to remember there's a lot. Is, you're never playing this many condensed fixtures. We need rotation. No, no, the, no, the rotational totally. element in, in, in an English Premier League side but, can't be under understated. But the immediate player that I want to replace in this squad is a is probably a Lindelof. I want to plug in another center back. Right? If you look at that starting 11, I like Matic. I love the midfield. I even like the front three. I would just like if I could have another, another center back, I would take another center back. Yeah, you need one like who's a little more of a bruiser. You need like Harry Maguire. He even seems like a little Mr. Nice Guy. Lindelof, you know, I'm not going to say much about him, but we kind of need a center back. Bailly should be that guy. Can he stay healthy? So maybe, hey, let's see what Bailly does. If he gets a start next week, let's see how he finishes. You know, I could see Bailly, Lindelof, and Maguire doing it, but they have to kind of break the trend of last season of these gaffes, tough times at the back, as well as injuries, right? Those are the things we need to get rid of. I think you got to... You got to get rid of Phil Jones. You got to get someone else in. Yeah. You got to look to maybe a young English prospect, something along those lines, sir. What what Sir Alex did probably works for us. Checking in with top four right now. Uh, we are actually watching the match. Arsenal are beating Wolves one nil in the 66th minute. So that would be good for us. Basically, Wolves are in the mix. Clearly, uh, we have a game in hand here. Leicester City, they play, they won today, they go to 58, we're on 55, Chelsea on 54, but they play later today, I believe they play Aston Villa, right, no, sir? No, Watford, sir. They play Radio Watford. Radio Watford. Uh, that's right, we're playing Villa next, that's on my mind. Wolves right now playing Arsenal, they are losing at 52, so Wolves losing, that'd be big benefit be. to us. Leicester City, we need them to draw Crystal Palace. You can't expect much out of Crystal Palace uh, at the moment, so three points behind Leicester. The 5-2 does do something for that goal differential because right now we're on 23, Leicester at 32. The thing is that we're even because Leicester won 3-0, no, we won 5-2, so we didn't catch up anything there. But we got to be beating these teams bad because that might, it might come down to goal differential with Leicester on the last game of the season. And that is what worries me because Chelsea, they got an easy match. They, I think they're going to win it. And it's, it's just these are going to come, these fixtures coming in fast and furious. 
No, there's going to be a, the one when it goes like four games, nine, 10 days. That's when it's going to get really. He's not going to be able to start at starting 11 every game, right? There's no way. I, would I mean, think. you could in sub. You could do it. Could the heavy it, sub, right? Yeah. Like you bash him in the first half. Well, I'd much rather. Yeah, I, I, we're, we're going to have to see because we're, we're, we didn't look good when we rotated. No, you know, and we're and it's that's a, that's a big question mark for this team. And that that basically it's coming up next week, this tight uh, fixture spell. So let's keep our fingers crossed. So looking at the rival watch, like we said, Chelsea play Watford today at 12 p.m. Hope for a miracle. Hopefully Watford, Troy Deeney, someone can beat Chelsea. I doubt it. They're probably going to win. Then they play Crystal Palace on Tuesday. You know, that's a pretty easy fixture. Leicester beat Crystal Palace today. They play Arsenal Tuesday. So we hope Arsenal can beat Wolves. We hope Arsenal. I'm a big Arsenal fan these days. <laughs> hope Arsenal can beat Leicester. I mean, that would be a big one. Yeah. And then Wolves play Sheffield United Wednesday. So Wolves being the benefit of getting more days rest, play Sheffield United. But again, hope Sheffield United can do something against Wolves. They're not an easy side, sir. Come on, Dino. You know, obviously we're playing Villa. Villa is, you know, pretty poor, but they did do it on us early in the season at home. We got to go to Villa Park. So, you know, you're looking at top four. It really is up for grabs. Looking at the bookies, there are no odds updated today. It really comes out tomorrow after everyone plays. So I'll keep you posted. But just a reminder, Chelsea minus 225 leading the pack. Manchester United minus 200. Leicester plus 110. Wolves plus 300. And that is how it stands. So it's really Chelsea, United, Leicester, and Wolves. As far as the bookies have it, Chelsea and Manchester United will be making top four. I would like to go as far enough to pip Chelsea, sir. Because you know what? We don't, we're don't. we no fan of the Chelsea scum on this podcast. We're no fan of Chelsea scum. We're no fan of City scum or Liverpool scum. So we want to get into third. And that's the goal. Like We want to finish the season strong, kick on a third, get as close to our, our real rivals at the top as possible, and then push on from there and just be like, yo, we need the last 100 million to 150 million quid, and let's go all the way in, and let's push for the title. I mean... <sighs> Do it. Sancho Cabali, bro. We're Look, ready. The good news is... We don't play till Thursday. And that's right. Our next match, jumping into that, Manchester United versus Aston Villa. We just talked about it at Villa Park. We play Thursday, July 9th, 12, 15 p.m. So great kickoff time. Very important game for Manchester United. We'll know where everyone stands before we play. And these have been the hardest matches in the past. In the prior year, what has happened is everyone else has dropped points, and we go into that game, and that messes with our heads, and we're not able to pick them up, sir. Aston Villa, we've played 187 times. We've won 98, drawn 40, lost 49. We first played them in November 1892, and we won 2-0 in the League Division One. That was the same year Ellis Island opened. It was the same year the Stanley Cup was donated to the NHL, what would become the NHL. So you want to think about how old the Stanley Cup is. That is the last time we played. That was the first time we played Villa. And the first Sherlock Holmes novel was published, sir. I mean... 1892, big year. Big year. Go, <laughs> big year. Going way back. But I mean, that Stanley Cup, I mean, that that's that goes pretty far back. That's the first time Manchester United play Aston Villa. I mean, these are two clubs that have been around since the beginning of the game. Aston Villa founded in 1874. They played at their home ground, Villa Park, since 1897. I mean, the history runs deep. Aston Villa were one of the founding members of the English Football League in 1888 and one, and one of the Premier League in 1992. Story club. But, you know, they're kind of up against it in this relegation fight. And Villa are only one of five English clubs to have won the European Cup in 1981-82. I mean, that's a quiz. <laughs> Not many people know that they're European Cup holders. They have also won the Football League First Division seven times, the FA Cup seven times, the League Cup five times, and the European Super Cup once. So Villa, I mean, they have the history. They're a very important side. At the moment, mainly because they got Jack Grealish. He's got the hairstyle. We want to buy Jack Grealish, but their form is terrible. They've lost four, drawn two. Project Restart's not been kindly to them. What do you make of it? I think you said the game is Saturday. It's actually Thursday at 12.15, sir. I said Thursday at 12.15, uh, uh, even though it's written there. It's uh, so Saturday. Uh, good point. So Thursday game, big game. We got a good n- number of rest. Um, hopefully they go down, right? Because that, that's got to change the valuation in a meaningful way. You would think, right? Uh, I would think it'd be the difference between a 60 versus like a $40 million transfer. Because if he stays up, they know they need to keep him. If he goes down, everyone's going to be circling for Jack Grealish. I haven't heard much Jack Grealish to Manchester United talk at the moment. I mean, it's one of those things where we're hot and heavy. I actually know uh, 
who is the that coach, the former yeah, coach the of somebody? Tim Sherwood. Sherwood. What does Sherwood, uh, Tim Sherwood know? Tim Sherwood's like, I think it's done. It's I, was done like, deal. I don't know. Done deal. So uh, everyone's talking out. You know, there. You know what, sir? Uh, at the moment, I think you want them. United aren't signing anyone at the moment. I mean, I like the transfer window's not on. No one knows when the next season's going to start. Europa League might run into the back of the next season. They're talking about starting without the big teams or delaying the start in some fashion. The transfer window is going to run till October. I think we're going to get sick of these rumors. Uh, look, having that run a little, having that window run a little longer gives clubs more certainty around cash flow. So maybe we can figure out how to spend money. At the same time, like, you know, Grealish, he'd be a great buy. Sancho, he'd be a great buy. Insert young center back here. Great buy. I don't know if it's going to happen. We got to focus on the players at hand. For me, you know, Jack Grealish, great if it happens, but, you know, who knows? Yeah, I think that's a good point. I think we're gonna, it's going to be a lot of wait and see because the window doesn't even open. we got so much football left to play. The window doesn't even open, and it's going to be really dependent on how we finish. It's going to dictate our, our budget in, in a lot of ways. So we're going to have a lot of transfer, a lot of Muppet, Muppetry to talk about. No, absolutely. Uh, looking at injuries we talked about on physioroom.com, Axel, Twan, Zabie, Phil Jones, they're out. No real update there. And Lindelof. Ole said he did his back. They hope it's not too bad, but they did have to sub him off at halftime. So he probably needs a match. Given those are the injuries, sir, what is your lineup? I think it's got to be our de facto starting 11 with Bae. So it's going to be AWB, De Gea Net, of course, back four, um, AWB, Maguire, Bae, Shaw, midfield, Matic, Bruno, Pogba, and a front three of Martial, Rashford, and who else but Mason Greenwood. I'm going to go with uh, the same lineup. <laughs> who else? I mean, who else would it be I at mean, this point? It, like David De Gea, Juan Basaka, Bailly, Maguire, Shaw, Matic, Pogba, Bruno, Rashford, Martial, and Greenwood. But just to note on the turnaround, we play Villa Thursday, Southampton Monday, <sighs> Crystal Palace Thursday. Then we got United versus Chelsea FA Cup semifinal Sunday. So we're talking like three-day turnarounds all around for the next four matches. I think you'll see could you, you could make the argument for rotation against Villa, but I if you're you can't take the foot off the gas right now with this starting eleven, right? They're gonna they're gonna have a nice rest now. They got until Thursday. You gotta play them, and then I think you rotate against Southampton. But arguably Villa is the worst side, so maybe you rotate Villa. I just can't not start the best team every time. I don't think you I don't know if you do rotate. I think if you can get players out and get them some rest. You just go out with your best starting eleven and look to get goals early. Well, you know, and go managers up. like to tinker. I know they do, managers but I don't. Like, I think Ole's on to something. Uh, he doesn't want to right, tinker. Right now, you and me could be the manager of Manchester United. It's easy, but the thing yeah. is, it's it's when you start dealing with these tight turnarounds. That's injuries. Where the injuries? You, as a manager, you can overthink it. You could try to get away with one. You could try to rest Greenwood. You could try to rest Martial. Maybe put Rashford in nine. There's things you could try to do. You may put. James on the left, Rashford in the hole. Maybe give Gallo a start. Exactly. I, and it's just one of those things where I think the strategy is beat them bad, beat them early, sub them off. Yeah. That is, I, yeah, I, I do. Roll them early. <laughs> yeah, just roll, roll, roll. Get them out early. Do it right. Uh, booking the bookies, Villa plus 800. That's even worse than AFC. Bournemouth was there plus 700. The draw plus 380. Man United minus 275. You could bet on that one if you would like. Uh, you have to bet a lot to gain a little. To score, Ra- Martial plus 300, Rasher plus 320, Gallo plus 350, Greenwood plus 550. I like that. Bruno plus 550. I mean, with the bookies watching the same game I was here, uh, and Pogba plus 850, Fred Fred watch plus 2500. <laughs> Maguire's ready to score before him. Again, this is to uh, score first as well. That's why the odds are so high. Uh, for Villa, Grealish is plus 1100 to score. Given those are the odds, given the bookmakers have had it that way, what is your score prediction? Six, seven. 4-1. Thumping. Grealish gets a banger, um, but United roll. I'm going to say 6-1. Six, 6-1. One. Six, one. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Greenwood hattie, son. That's why I, Greenwood's got to get the hat trick. I, I thought Ole took him off a little too early this time around, but I think we're going to win. And the real question is, what do you do? Do you rotate against Southampton? Hell of a lot going on. Lots of football coming in fast and furious. I'm nervous. I'm I'm just looking at. I have the fixtures pulled up. It's just a little. It's a nervous. lot of games. It's a little <laughs> nervous. Uh, we've got a very uh, fortunate schedule, but there's a ton of games, and it's yeah to rotate or not to rotate. That is the question. I have to think that the 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 real the the only real screw in the whole thing is this FA Cup semifinals against Chelsea, and I honestly think that 
is that a like what's a bigger game for you as a fan? Is it the West Ham Manchester United after that, or is it the Crystal Palace Manchester United before that? And I think always going to try to get away with it by playing a, a tier two team against Crystal Palace and then try to play the full squad because he wants to win silverware. He wants it all. We got to go for it all, but that's kind of where you can mess things up. And you know, I think top four is more important than the FA Cup at the moment. It is. It depends on how the games go up until up until the semifinal. But you're playing at the Wembley, uh, unfortunately not in front of fans, against Chelsea Scum for a place in the final against City Scum. It's huge. You got. I mean, it, it's big silverware. I'd rather FA finish C- above Chelsea in the table than beat them in the FA Cup. So would personally. I. No, so would I. But I'd rather do both. And I think by doing both, <laughs> you start getting greedy. You, you're, I'm very greedy. I'm a Manchester United fan. You roll that eleven and you play your starting eleven, the strongest one. And you just hope to smash them. Same with Chelsea. Let's smash them early. Smash them. All right. United in the news, sir. Bringing you the latest Manchester United news here on the American Red Devils podcast. Paul Scholes scores goals. He says Manchester United will make top four per the Manchester Evening News. Per the Manchester Evening News via the BBC. It's hard to keep track of these these rags in England because they just quote each other. It's just total (laughs) nonsense. Uh, he, he told the BBC Sport, I think they'll make top four. They're going to have to win every game to do it, but you look at the fixtures and they're very winnable. If Ole can keep his team fit, the first 11 that played the other night, I don't see a reason why not. Obviously, he's referring to Bournemouth. I don't think the squad is massively strong where he can leave player, players out and afford to give people a rest for FA Cup or Europa League as it was. He needs to play his best team for now until the end of the season, and I think they have a great chance. I mean, you heard it there from Paul Scholes. He was the Oldham manager while he was a manager of Oldham. He was he was gambling <laughs> on football. Got fined. He's a boss. He's a legend. I mean, Paul Skull said it there. You got to play the, the best 11 every time. I think he's right. I think he's right. I think we were saying the same thing. This He doesn't have the depth. We've shown it. He tried to mix it up, and he hasn't gotten the results. Had to bring on the big guns and almost blew it there with Norwich. I think you go out with his turn 11. It's a sprint, and you just hope. Keep your fingers crossed. You can keep everybody um, fit, and you just rotate as much as you can, right? You do have some position where you can rotate, but I think you go out and try and smoke them early. Yeah, like you said, it's almost it's one of those things where it's almost a start to a new season, and you're and because it's such a short season, a short new season, you don't have time to tinker. Where you could before you could afford to maybe lose a game here or there and see what this this lineup would look like, but right now you can't. You can't try to put Greenwood at nine and put James out on the right. And see how that looks. You're, you just don't have the time for that. It's July fourth today. The league's gonna be done by the end of July. Think about it. it's like all this will be wrapped up as well as the FA Cup by the end of this month, bro. <laughs> and then we got Europa League. <laughs> then we got yeah, Europa yeah, League, yeah. which uh, is gonna be fun too. Next bit of news. Uh, this comes from a journalist, former journalist Ian McGarry from the Sun and the Mail. He was chief football writer at the Sun. Quote: Sancho agrees to terms with Manchester United. There's Sancho talk. United put out last week. Per Sky Sports, which you know they usually source their sources, United aren't going to pay more than fifty million. Now Ian McCary, he's got connections. Ex Sun and Mail guy says we have agreed personal terms. And again, for those Manchester United fans who aren't familiar with how it works, you usually agree personal terms with the player. They want the move, then you have to negotiate with the club. Sometimes it goes the other way, but that's usually in the in like the Dybala scenario where Juventus want to sell Dybala. The clubs agree, and then the player kind of has to is forced to move. Right. Then you got to negotiate with him, and so you're really negotiating with two separate parties. I totally think Sancho. It is possible that we have agreed to terms with him, but I think the idea of agreeing to terms is just is more of a the agent has talked, they're up for the move, the player is interested in the move, and we're up for paying the player what he wants type of thing. It's it's probably more higher high level. It's probably just kind of like a nod, you're not really signing a contract yet. You're just agreeing to a term sheet, the high level bullet points of the deal. And then it's going to be like, okay, well, we'll sign you for this if we can negotiate with Dortmund. So I'm going to say, yes, this is possible. Could be a bunch of malarkey, sir. I don't know. What do you make of this, Sancho? Agrees to terms with United. Could be a lot of malarkey. I mean, this guy could be just making it up. <laughs> That's one thing. Uh, but this is probably like, you know, you're doing a deal and you get like indicative terms in an email or over the phone. And you're just like, yeah, we'll do a deal with you. We'll pay you. We'll pay Sancho, you know, $25 million a year if we can get a deal done with Dortmund. Yep. But this is what you want done. If you're going to buy a player, you don't want the Dabala thing. You don't want the club being like, hey, take this freaking player we're trying to get rid of. You want to talk to the player. No, Sancho him of the project. Yeah, he wants to come to Manchester United. You want agreement there. And then you haggle 
with a club because the player wants to get out of that club. So that's actually a better position than a position United's been in a lot, right? <laughs> Which is also well, like trying to pry away a player who probably isn't that keen to come to United in the first place. And now all he's going after players who want to join the project, want to play for United. That was the big deal about Bruno. He wanted to play at Manchester United, right? He wanted to follow Ronaldo and play at this great club. And I think it's showing why he did, why he wants to, right? He's, he's showing he could play at the highest stage. I think play, I think Sancho wanted to come last season, and you would have come if we got Champions League football. Uh, you know, it, it, it comes down to that at the end of the day. Apparently, the terms of the deal were 40, uh, 140K a week. That's pounds. And his salary increasing over 200K over the course of five years. So Jaden Sancho would be up there with the Paul Pease of the world making over 200K a week. Probably driving a Rolls Royce, something like that. And he, Ian McCary also talked about how essentially we're haggling over the transfer fee. Personally, when I did the financial analysis, I was like, there's no way we're going to get Sancho, right? But now that I'm seeing there's a lot of movement on this side, maybe some agents are chirping that uh, terms are agreed and Sancho sat at Dortmund. And apparently, you know, Dortmund wants to cash in. Clearly, it's a global pandemic, so some concessions will need to be made. And if, especially if the player's motivated to go to United and the player's motivated to go to England, some cheeky deal can be worked out. Because at the end of the day, Dorman don't want Sancho going down to a one-year deal, and then they don't want to sell him at a cut rate price next season. So they could be up for some structured type of transfer, like we've discussed, where United can pay them over time, and he can move to Manchester United, obviously with lots of incentives, etc., uh, they could be open to that, you know, because I, I think Sancho is going to be really good. I think we'll make Champions League. So I think there's a lot of these bonus payments that we can end up paying Dortmund that would benefit United, who's cash strapped, and Dortmund, who, you know, have a player who don't doesn't want to be there necessarily, and he's worth quite a bit of money. But it's hard to move in a, in a pandemic, and we're starting to see this. So again, this is going to be one of those sagas that'll probably go to October. It will go the whole window. Yeah, it'll go a long time, and there's going to be lots of ups and downs to go with it. Um, but I do think the Dortmund will be willing to take a structured deal. Like say it's 90 million guaranteed over three years, $30 million installments. Like that's not bad in a pandemic. Um, no, but yeah, probably totally over a hundred with incentives. Right. It, it, like these are the upside. Types of he wins the balloon Dior, seeing. you pay him a buck 50, right? Like, yeah, you, you, you the balloon. Yeah. The balloon Dior <laughs> Ballon d'Or. <laughs> yes. It's Saturday morning early. It's a balloon. It's a balloon. You know, they this golden balloon. <laughs> And they, and they sailed away into the sky. The best footballer in the world. Uh, just a balloon. It's that's that's the shape of the, of the trophy, right? It is a balloon, isn't it? <laughs> it is, it's a it's, it's a it's a pelota, sir. It's a pelota. The ball. <laughs> uh, so I think that closes the books on the Sancho deal. Uh, shout out to Phil on Twitter. Um, I can't can't pronounce his name. Phil the Bruin. Uh, he basically said he caught up with his sources. He does have sources on the inside. No one's heard about United saying they're only going to pay 50, and no one's heard about personal terms agreed. Now, I think everyone says they have sources, and so it's hard to know who you can trust. All I know is that I have seen Sancho not playing for Dortmund. I do think he wants a move. Dortmund want to sell. That is kind of their MO, and United Ole wants them. So it's up to the Glazers, I think, at the end of the day to be able to get something done. And I think if we do make top four and the momentum's on our side, the Glazers are going to get greedy because, you know, we got that American blood. You're like, we want to go for more. We want to go for titles. We want to win more. We want more sponsors, sir. Kohler Sinks. Shout out Kohler Sinks. Maui Jim. <laughs> get your Maui Jim <laughs> shades. I actually wanted to get Not some, on sale, but not on sale. They're top price. I wanted to get some Maui Jim shades just so I can troll Maui Jim sunglasses just because I think the the sponsorship between a Hawaiian sunglasses brand and Manchester where it's like cloudy all like literally <laughs> 280 days of the year I think is the most ironic sponsor of all time. And I went on the website. They're like $350 for a pair of sunglasses. <laughs> I'm like, all right. I'm good. <laughs> I mean, that, that's not worth it for me to do the joke. But uh you know, United need to win. They need to show the the brand is still strong to make sponsorships. And I think the Glazers and Woodward, that's how they think. So if we can kind of kick on, you, you can't really hamstring us now. They ham, they like held us back under Mourinho. Now, if you see Ole playing well, everything's going well. You're seeing other teams buying. It's not good for the brand if we kind of just like hold the brakes. No, it look you look bad. It, you know, it makes Liverpool look bad that they didn't buy Werner. And it'll make us look bad if Sancho, if there's a deal to be done and we don't do a deal because... You got to spend money to be a big club and we got to spend money and we need to like put a, you know, it's, I know it's not 16, but like, you know, when LVG got that big window and sp splashed like a buck 50, no problem, but all these shit players, <laughs> we need Ole to basically have that with good players. Like you just need to give them a proper chunk of cash. 
We defer it as much as we can. Maybe we raise some debt in order to well, do it. Well, I think I think it comes down. I'd sell the naming rights to Old Trafford, and oh, I know all the people in the brutal. UK are going to have a heart attack. But it's something that we've done in America, and you know, it, a lot of teams do it here. It doesn't really matter because ever all the fans will reference it to Old Trafford, and it would just be like you know Maui Gym Stadium. <laughs> Maui Gym Stadium, and they put some big old sunglasses on the stadium. But maybe you could fix the leaky roof, and you could get Sancho. So I mean, like if, if, if that's what it comes to, I don't. I'm not really that I'm not bothered about it because it comes down to cash, son. It just comes down to cash. It's like there you go. We did Maui Gym Stadium, America. It's very America thinking. Just cash. <laughs> just sell the naming rights. Hundred year old stadium. Yeah, hundred year old stadium. Maui sell Gym. It. Maui Gym Stadium. Uh, <laughs> No more Piano Man. Uh, this comes from Sky Sports. On loan at enter the season, Sanchez could stay at the San Siro even longer. The Siri Ah Giants are looking to sign the Chilean international permanently. They love him over there. The rumor fee is $18 million. Again, that's a good chunk of change. I like to see 20 25 That would be a great deal. And then we could use that money to buy Sancho. You know, we need to be selling. So I think we got to pip Phil Jones. We got to pip Jesse Lingard. We got to get rid of Sanchez. We need to use that money. Do the Sancho deal. It's going to be a lot of haggling on Manchester United's side, a lot of stuff going on. I hope we can sell some players, raise some cash, and do it that way. Otherwise, you know, Maui Gym Stadium until I die. <laughs> Justin, <laughs> if we keep winning, he's it's only going to cement the fact that he wants to come to United, right? It's like very clear that like we're not going to have to fight over other clubs trying to get Sancho, hopefully from under our nose, because he's in about the project. If Paul was hanging around, Rashford's here, Greenwood, there's a lot of reasons for him to want to be at the club. So now it's just about getting the price figured out. All right, rivals watch. Arsenal up two now, 87th minute. Wolves look to be dropping points. Big move in the fight for top four. Not quite the best team we need to lose points, but it's good to have Wolves have some daylight between us. So shout out to those uh, Gooners. Arsenal Fan TV went in today. <laughs> uh, next bit of news. Dwight York frustrated Manchester United did not hijack Leroy Sané transfer. Dwight York gave an, Yorkie gave an interview, quote, it's always been at the forefront of the club to make sure we try to stay ahead. I looked at our attacking players at the moment. It's really exciting, but I like to balance my team a bit. And there's one thing we're missing ideally in that team. At the moment, is a really good left-footed player who can give you something. I would have hijacked Sané. I think he's a terrific player. It would really send the message. I also do agree with Dwight York here on sending a message. Although Sané, he got left out of Germany in the World Cup. Attitude issues. I, I like him as a player in FIFA. He's pacey. He's great. You're right. You can play on the left. You can play him on the right. And he went for 55. Deal. You know, but I don't think he's a United player. You know, I, I do like him, but I don't think he's a United player. So I think he's onto something where we need to chip up. Chelsea's chipping up. They're sending the signal, hey, we're coming. Yeah, they are. And like, we need to chip up too. And we need to send that same signal because Liverpool at the moment, they're just getting their lunch eaten by Chelsea. Chelsea's like, who does Liverpool want? We'll buy him for more. And that's good. They are. They're following that model, which we did a little bit with City. It's like, who City want? Oh, we'll take them. Fred, we'll take them. <laughs> with this one, they're not going to sell a Sane. You know, that was the problem. Is like, they didn't sell us. Sancho when he went to Dortmund and we tried to buy him then because they don't want to strengthen us, which is smart. Uh, and they weren't going to sell Asani either. So if we can get Sancho, no big deal. We're strengthening, we're adding options, but Sane going 50 million is a good deal for any team. No, I mean, I, I look, if his attitude's all right, it's, it's, it's good on me. Let's jump into fan questions. Thank you for the banter, bringing it hard on Twitter. We love it. We live tweet the matches. We're also on discord. You can find those links on Twitter can join the match day conversation at Dave pause on Twitter quote always at the wheel. How does it feel? What a game. I know Sancho would be a good signing, but I'm thinking a partner for big array would be more important. You read our minds, Dave. I think we, I think we battle beat that horse into the ground. I, I say we need a center back. Alex, what's your vote there? I agree. Absolutely. But it's like one of those things where you want them all. You want all the players, sir. You know what? You want all the players uh, in the transfer window. At Red Devil Woody on Twitter, quote, thought we would drop a clanger here. Lads proved me wrong. However, we need to cut out these silly mistakes if we're to mount for a challenge next season. We've lost too many points to shit teams this year. Got to cut it out. Totally agree. You know, but I like the fact that we're scoring five and we can make up for those mistakes because earlier in the year, we'd have lost to AFC Bournemouth 2 1. We would have. And we would have, or 2 2, but, you know, this is not going to be the same for every big team, right? So you cannot give up these shit goals to a top side because it's a lot harder to claw back those goals. You can maybe get a tying one, but you're not going to be able to roll five on a top team. So 
the the stupid mistakes from De Gea, the stupid mistakes from the the center backs have to stop if you're going to be a title challenging team because they don't make them. You just can't have like those gaff city. You know, it can't be football follies if you're going for twenty one. Unfortunately, it's in the blood. It, you know, it ain't the blood. <laughs> it's in the water. Uh, at Michael's, it's in that water break, sir. That's what it is. At Michael72 on Twitter, quote, awesome win. However, I'm beginning to think that we should pass on Sancho with the emergence of Greenwood and focus the money to have a top center back. It's the first time I've heard that. Bold, <laughs> yeah, that's a new one. Bold call, Michael. If we signed Agallo on a permanent deal, I could get behind this, but the fact that Agallo is going to leave next January, go to Shanghai, Shenzhen, I I think we need we need another winger to come in and also seeing James come in as a sub I don't think he's the man that we can really rely on you know rotating the squad and you want an option so if you didn't have to drop Greenwood maybe you drop, like I said earlier like you might drop Rashford right now from this eleven and drop in a Sancho and put Rashford on the bench as an option just based on form so you got to have options we're Manchester United we do we're, we're also Green was a f- nine Green was a nine so you need options yeah, that he wing. can play anywhere right, exactly. it looks like he can play anywhere he can play in the right wing left wing nine he can probably play in ten as well but you just need more attacking options in general so the priority should be a center back and a winger or a striker, right? Whether it can be a like striker winger or a combo of the two. Um, but those are the priorities at T Zolski on Twitter quote, happy four sirs had some shaky moments, but the lads responded, love the way AWB started to attack on the right side. When was the last time our top three all scored in one game? Bruno was magnifico hoodie is still unbeaten. We march on five more to go. Glory, glory, man United. Awesome t- tweet from T Zolski. You can find our unbeaten hoodie, sir. We're almost sold out of them. We're ordering more in our American Red Devils store, AmericanRedDevils.com. Click on store. Next tweet, at Ty Kircher, quote, the absolute purebred stallions we have running through that front five is just magical to watch. What a charge from earlier this season. We go down and heads don't hang. Attacking football, wow. Mason on fire, buzzing for days yet again. Keep it going, lads. Keep it going, lads. Indeed, what a front five we have. Um, and they're going to just get better and better, feeding off each other, or oozing goals. Let's keep it going. At United underscore glory with two Ys, quote, what would be your center back pairing for the next game? And why does Lindelof get sub for Maguire's mistake? Thoughts on Bayou 2. Love your guys' pod. Much love from India. Shout out to India. Shout out to listen to the pod way across the pond. Sir, what would be your center back pairing for the next game? I mean, it's got to be McGuire and Bay. We don't have a lot of options. Uh, Lindelof got the hook, I think, because of his back injury. But Bay is what you'd want to work with a McGuire, right? He makes up for his lack of speed. He can kind of bail him out in situations. It's just that sometimes Bay makes some gaps as well. No, absolutely. And I like Bay because he has that edge. You want a center back who's mean. You want a center back who strikers don't want to play against. Someone who might come out of nowhere and just like end their day. And that's the type of fear Bay puts into players. Bear, I mean, Ari has that in him as well. When he's playing his best, he like ah, he's, he's a teddy bear. He's, no, dude. He's a teddy he, no, bear. He's the a big games teddy bear. we've seen Harry play the best is when he's fucking up no, strikers. He's, he, Harry's like in the air no, no. winning every ball. Air, he's air ball. good on the ball. He's towering. He can head it and. You know, he can pick a pass, but Harry's not like gonna like jack someone up like Vidic would. You know, like Vidic would be he like, should. well, he should. Vidic is he like should. To the he's, a, he's, a to mon- the he's a monster. He he should, should, like, by he's like, he's like, smoking death. fools more. That's <laughs> why, why like, if he dies, he dies. That's I'm why Bayer always gets injured then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You need like a defender who, you know, you never know if he's gonna just completely do a double leg break. Uh, at MJ Fit 16 on Twitter, quote, this team is roaring and we can win everything in front of them. That put them in a better position to spend. They continue to spend, and we can end Liverpool's menacing run. Like this tweet, don't like Liverpool. But again, thinking the next season, I think it's all eyes on this season. Clearly, transfer will open up, and all that muppetry will happen. We'll cover that all summer long. But we just got to focus on winning, getting top four, and maybe some silverware in the process. At Tweet Sauce 13, quote, the boys are flying. Can we just go get Adama for $50 million in lieu of Sancho? I like Adama. He's Yoke City. Yoke City FC. I mean, what do you think of Adama? I don't think we're getting him for $50 million, um, Premier League like proven. I like Sancho. I like his youth. I like his age. And I think we can get a deal. Deferred payments. Let's, let's get it done. Awesome. And last tweet here at Mikey Dubs 09 Quote, Greenwood Masterclass. Right foot, left. Didn't matter. Number 10, Bruno Magnifico. Martial bar down number uh, basically player ratings. The Martial bar down that's a nine. Come on, Watford. So I got to give the Martial bar down a ten. Uh, what do you make of that tweet? No, the Martial goal was like perfect. I mean, there were a lot of buttes today. That's why it was all Telemundo all the time because they were they were all pretty goals. 
Um, and come on, Watford. We're all rooting for Radio Watford just to smash Chelsea. Radio Watford. Uh, just kidding. This is the last tweet. At Sunny SoCal, Rob25, quote, hope Bruno shares some of that milk with Pogba so he can get on the score sheet. Paul P. I mean. Hasn't even scored yet. That's coming. But he's selfless. He's this playing, is a selfless great. Paul P. He's playing P. great. This is no drama, Pogba. No Pog drama, no nothing. He does a great job. Engine in the midfield. Clearly, he's not being talked about a lot after the match, but Paul Pogba, selfish play, a selfless play, and he looks great, absolutely great. It's the best football he's played at Manchester United. Best football in the best side, to be fair, since he's been here, but he is just playing, uh, like I said, selflessly and looking just top, top player. Just playing really well with Matej and Bruno, um, and he's not getting probably a lot of the credit he deserves at the moment because Bruno's getting so much of it. Sir, what a podcast. Happy 4th of July to all American Red Devils. It has been real. United are back. Pod is back. Numbers are ripping. Sir, let's do our top cities last seven days. Number one, how you doing? How you doing? Quillerville, Tennessee. Number two, Oxford, United Kingdom. Number three, Louisville, Kentucky. Sir, keep us going. Number four, Chirac on the board. Number five, New York, New York. Number six, Bangkok, Thailand, sir. Finish us off. Number seven, Esberg, Denmark. Number eight, Oslo, Norway. Number nine, Kenny Bunk, Maine. And last but not least, Schenectady, New York. How you doing? How you doing? Appreciate all the downloads. Appreciate everyone listening in. And like John said, extra special happy 4th of July for all of our American Red Devils watching around the world, wherever you may be. United are rolling. 5-0, smash Bournemouth. We got Thursday. We got who we got? Aston Villa, sir. Grealish. Aston Villa. Playing Jack really sure, you know, it's uh it's gonna be an amazing game. Let's hit him early, let's hit him hard, let's get the subs, get players some rest. It's been a real podcast. Hope everyone enjoys this fourth of July. Can't believe we're watching Manchester United win on the fourth of July. What Love a it. summer, what a year this has been. Hope everyone's staying safe, healthy, sticking with you guys. And we got football. Football's back, United are back, and this has been a big this has been a big uh you know, uplift in my life. You have to say it's been it's been a tough couple of months and to have United back, especially playing this well, feeling the feels. It's just it can't be better. It's hard to beat, sir. United are rolling on. Look, support the pod. It's just us two in the bunker. We do everything. AmericanRedDevils.com. Click on store. Drop a review on iTunes. You know the drill. Hoodies are undefeated, sir. How good does it feel? Well, is it the wheel? Oh,